Barizam Shana from Dar es Salaam. I'm currently sitting around and waiting for a new passport from the U.S. Embassy. So I was thinking, I'm going to use my time in a constructive way and cross this giant bridge that was built by the Chinese. Let's go across it and see what we can learn. So this bridge, which is called the Kingamboni Bridge, or the Nyerere Bridge, depending on who you're asking, was just finished merely less than five years ago. And it was built because back in the day, for a hundred years, if you were a Tanzanian and you wanted to cross from this side of the river over here, on this side is, well, you have the heart of Dar es Salaam. You have the business district, you have the residential areas, you have most of the city. But if you wanted to cross from here to the other side, which is the King Amboni district, you had to take a ferry. And in many parts of Tanzania, it's still like this. <laughs> there are, there's a lack of bridges, and you'd have to take a ferry to cross from one end to the other. And it's a time-consuming process. Now, the Chinese came along in around 2012, and they spoke with the former president of Tanzania, and they reached an agreement to build this and simplify the passage. There's also a lot of people just under the bridge doing little odd jobs. Let me see what's up. This looks exactly like that spot in the Sopranos where people would get whacked. I, I think 99% of the international audience has no idea what I'm talking about, but yeah. Basically, <laughs> this looks like a good place to do a drug deal. Hey, <laughs> Mambo. I'm not fan of Vuvi. Okay. Kuna, Kuna Samaki. Okay, okay, okay. Una tafuta nini. Una tafuta nini. Yeah. Nyuma. Okay. So work on the bridge began in 2012 and it was completed four years later in 2016 under the presidency, the former presidency of Magafuli. It was built by a massive Chinese conglomerate called the China Railway Company. And it was built by one of their subsidiaries that they set up here in Africa. Now this company is actually listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. You could go and buy shares if you want. However, by far the majority shareholder is the Chinese government. Mambo. It wouldn't be a Chinese bridge without ubiquitous security cameras all along it. Mambo. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, in recent years, the idea of quote-unquote debt trap diplomacy has become a big thing in international relations. And a lot of people, when they hear about an infrastructure project that was built in Africa by a Chinese company, that's immediately what springs to mind. Now, personally, I don't think that every single project that was built by the Chinese in Africa is some evil scheme to put the country into debt and then take over it like 10 or 20 years later. But that is what uh, Magafuli was thinking. <laughs> the Tanzanian president from 2015 to 2020, his entire idea was that African countries were taking on too much debt, not just from China, but from Western countries as well, like Europe and the US, the IMF. And so, after this bridge was completed, he went on to cancel a contract 
by a Chinese company to build a port in Tanzania. We'll see how things develop now that he's gone. But all things considered, I think what you can agree on is that it's a pretty nice bridge. It's officially, apparently, <laughs> the longest cable wire bridge in sub-Saharan Africa. So it's a point of pride for Tanzania as well. Although, <laughs> when architects are coming up with uh, new infrastructure projects, they usually go for some kind of like record like that <laughs> to put on the resume. But, you know, what I can say is that a Chinese company saw a demand and a need in an African country. And they built something, they provided some work for the locals, there were Tanzanians involved in the construction of the bridge. And up until now, I don't see any issues with the deal. But I am completely unaware of how much money the bridge is potentially losing at the moment. All right, now that we've crossed to the other side, we're now in Kikamboni, which doesn't have a lot to do, but it does have some beach resorts. By the way, I hope you appreciate the sight of that toll booth back there. Because <laughs> uh, immediately after that, a security guard came up and detained me for almost 20 minutes, questioning me, why am I taking footage of a toll booth? Apparently it's okay to film the bridge, but not the toll booth. Ah, 
Trying to set me up in an arranged marriage again. This happens very often in Tanzania. So uh, as you can see here, we have the more traditional way of crossing the river. Driving your car onto a ferry and waiting like 20-30 minutes. ticket got my safari for the road let's get back to the action You have to tell me I can't bring the beer on. on the boat, 
security stopped me yet again to tell me that I can't film a ferry. They also told me that I couldn't bring a beer on board. Tanzania. Both of these rules are terrible for tourism. You gotta keep this in mind. Hey, welcome, my friend. Yes. yes. This is 2000. 2000. Oh. 2000. Okay. Yeah, that's 1000. Okay. There are 2000. Okay. Yes. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, people still vastly prefer taking the ferry to cross the river over going across the bridge. Mainly because the bridge is a little bit farther away. You gotta drive out like another 15, 20 minutes to get to it. So, there you go. A couple of uh, transportation options if you're ever in Dar es Salaam. And now you know a little bit more about their backstory. I'll see you guys next time. Hini kwa mimi. See you kwa Okay, okay. Bye bye guys. <laughs>